Hey, this is Matt Wimmer from Brady Precision. In this video, we're going to take a quick look at the serial shell process using the new Jace 9000. It looks almost identical to the process that we're used to with the 8000. Just a couple new options once we get into shell, and we're now using USB-C instead of micro USB, which is a great quality of life change. USB-C is just so much nicer to use than uh, micro USB is. So let's jump into things here. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to putty.org and we're going to download the putty application if you haven't done so already. So we'll go to putty.org, click on download putty, and then this 64-bit uh, x86 uh, installer is the one that you're going to want to download. Go through the install process and you'll be set there. Once that's done, you're going to plug your computer into the JACE, so USB-C cable. Depending on if you have USB-C on your computer or not, you'll use USB-C on that end, and then USB-C at the JACE. And once you're connected, you'll have a virtual COM port that's now uh, sh going to show up on your computer. So we're going to go to the Device Manager within Windows. So if we just click on the Start menu and type in Device Manager here, and we scroll down to the ports. We'll see that we have this USB uh, serial port. And on my computer, that's going to be COM6. That could be pretty much any number for you, depending on what other kind of COM ports uh, your computer has. Uh, this was COM3 before for me. It's COM6 now. So just keep that in mind. So COM6, uh, we're going to open up PuTTY now. And we're going to go to the serial connection option down here at the bottom of the list. And we're going to say that the COM port we want to use is COM6. The speed that we want to use is 115200. We have eight data bits. We have one stop bit. We have no parity and we have no flow control. So we're set on those settings. If we go back up to our session option at the very top, and we select serial from our connection type. Uh, all of our settings will get pulled across. And we're going to save this now as a save session. So I'm just going to call this J9. I already have this saved from previous, uh, previous playing around. So I'm going to do a save. And now you can pull these settings up automatically just by selecting that uh, in the future. So you don't have to remember those settings. And so I'm good to go now. And if I hit open... You can see that uh, I'm now connected. Uh, if I hit, you'll, you'll get this blank screen potentially when you go to log in. If you hit enter, it's going to ask you for your platform credentials. So you'll punch those in. And now I'm logged in. And we have a lot of similar options and settings. Uh, from the previous 8000, you can see we have our host ID. This is a beta unit, so I don't have a serial number, but on a normal uh, production unit, you would have a serial number. You've got your time, you've got what port your uh, daemon is running on, and if it's HTTPS. Uh, we've got our Ethernet port, so EN0 is going to be our primary port. Uh, in my case, I'm using this in DHCP, so I can see my IP address here, uh, and I've got the secondary port. And uh, it's down and not connected, so I don't see any uh, uh, information on that there. And we have our options like we uh, used to have with the 8000. We can update our time. We can update our network settings. We can ping other hosts on the network. We also have this new option uh, for, which is our system diagnostic options. Don't really have much of a reason to go in here unless you have an issue and tech support tells you um, to pull up some information for them. Uh, but those options are here, so you can see what CPU is doing, what our system log is doing, so op operating system level stuff. Uh, you can do trace routes. You can see your ARP, ARP table, uh, thread information, uh, and USB information as well. So if we go out of that, we go back to the, the main menu. We can change our uh, user password because we get multiple users for our platform, so we can change that here. Um, and... We can change our system passphrase. 
Uh, we can create a new backup. We can trigger a new backup to the SD card because in the 9000, uh, we're using the SD card strictly for backups. The station isn't running off of the SD card. Uh, so we can create that backup manually here. And we can do a restore from that SD card here as well. And when we do that, it pulls the uh, SD card for the backups that are available to you. And uh, you can select which one you want to pull in. It'll ask you for the passphrase or if the passphrase is the same as the passphrase that's already in the system. And then it'll do the full backup and restart itself. And you'll be, you'll be back uh, up and running like you were previously. So I'm going to hit Control C to break out of this restore menu and go back to the main shell menu. And that basically is it. Nine, we can do a reboot and L, we can log out. So hopefully that's helpful for you uh, if you're using the new Jace 9000. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and like the video if you liked it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.